his holy temple and all the earth keeps silent. And all his plague be said unto me that I spoke to the house of the Lord. That peace shall stay within our gates, O Jerusalem. Today we're here to celebrate the life of a friend, a sister, a brother, to us all. And we celebrate the life of sister Patricia. God, more than enough guidance, Lord God, for this family, Lord God. And God, you 
left us, Lord God, to be here, Lord God, to love on them today, Lord God. And God, we thank you, Lord God. God, we give you honor, God. God, we give you praise, God. God, we magnify your name on high today, Lord God. And Lord, you are our everything, Lord God. So God, we continue to look to you, Lord God, to the hills from which cometh our help. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen.
reflections with tender thoughts and prayers as we celebrate your loved one's life. A life that touched many with the gifts of kindness, caring, and love. He shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Psalm 31, verse 24. Mr. Jim, asking God to hold you close as he comforts you and sustains you in your loss. I will always miss her. She was the best. Jerry S. We're thinking of you. There are times when the right words just don't exist. We hope it will help you a little to know how much we are thinking of you and how much we keep. Betty Hargraves. Sympathy with sincere sympathy, with a natural sense of caring, and with kind and helpful ways, your loved one touched so many lives and brightened so many days. And we who share your sorrow deeply sympathize with you, for we understand your sense of loss, and we miss your loved one too, the women's ministry. Reflections in memory, Mrs. Patricia Paulin. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to close the life of Mrs. Patricia Paulin. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, we are told that God has a plan for each of our lives. Being a gracious God, he does have plans for us. But he leaves, follow, he leaves following those plans up to us. He gives us free choice to come to him, to trust him, to learn of him, to follow him, and he will make those plans work in all our favor. Yes, yes. When we give our hand in fellowship with the congregation of believers, we accept that God loves us and send his son to be our salvation. When we publicly signify his union by being baptized and joining in fellowship, Mrs. Patricia Paulin expressed this belief and joined St. James Baptist Church. She was a member of the women's ministry, and on Fridays, she would help prepare food for the homeless Mrs. Patricia was a faithful member. Amen. Our loving God knows when his children are ready for the healing that comes when they enter that final rest. Sister Patricia Paul is now in the loves, in the arms of our Heavenly Father. To the Paul and family and friends, as you feel the loss of your loved one, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is our sorrow. Yes. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And we recognize that this earthly loss is heaven's gain. Thank you for all that has uh, transpired. Thank God for uh, those persons who uh, sent cards, gave cards, and condolences to your family uh, at this time. We also thank God for those persons who were able to read scripture uh, and prayer. Uh, Minister Rogers, we thank you uh, as well. I do want this family to know that uh, on behalf of myself and the leadership of St. James family, um, that we are here for you and your family. Uh, Mr. Jim, I'm sure you pretty much know that. Whatever we can do for your family, we, we will. Um, Miss uh, Pat was one of us. Amen. Amen. So she, she's family. Amen. And we're just so grateful to have you guys and to know that we can be here for you. Everything that we can do for you, we will definitely do. Um, one, uh, at this time, if there were designated persons to come and give reflections at this time, if you would uh, please do so and please be mindful of Thank <laughs> you. 
Good morning, everybody. God bless. I don't want to forget whose daughter's my name is Caprice. Amen. My heart is heavy today, but my spirit rejoices. Because I know my mom. Whichever way, it would have turned out, she was going to be victorious. And now she's home to be with the Lord. I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss her humbleness. I'm going to miss our conversations on the phone. I'm going to miss that sweet spirit that she had. I know she loved to serve the Lord. There was times when I came down here to see her serve the Lord and work with her. Um, just the wisdom that she had, you know, the meekness is what really is that she imparted into me. No matter what, she was always the same. She always had that smile. She always had that graciousness. And she loved people. Yeah. And she loved to sew. She would always make things and, you know, she just, she loved to shop, you know, the different things that she loved. And um, I'm going to take that with me until I go home and meet with the Lord. I'm just going to miss her. And I think that's, you know, that's the hard part that you're going to miss her. But I thank God for her servant. I thank God for her being my mom. I thank God for her being my wife. I thank God for the gifts that she deposited. I even thank God for her loving my dad and everything that she did because she taught me how to love my husband. Amen. So God bless. Amen. And I'll see y'all again. Amen. Amen. 
gracious God, our Father, we bless you and we thank you, God, for the privilege that you've given us on today to celebrate the life of Sister Pat. We thank God for all that you've done through her in this life. But we definitely praise you and thank you for the preparations you've already made for her to live eternally with you. Lord, it is us who weep, it is us who mourn. But in the words of the Apostle Paul, we uh, we don't mourn as if we don't have any hope. Hallelujah. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest friend, but we wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock we stand, whereas all other ground Hallelujah. is sinking sand. Lord, I pray now that you will give me um, the unction, the undergirding of anointing, God, to be a blessing to this family, to encourage them, to uplift them, to empower them. And Lord God, I will plant, and uh, others may come by and water, but at the end of the day, it is you who will give the increase. Do it, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. We give praise and honor to God. We thank God for all of you who have taken the time to come out of there and support this family. Um, it really means a lot. Um, one of the sentiments that I always express is that real love is proven. You know, people can love you with words uh, and don't show it in deeds. And so real love is proven because if you look around, you'll see those who are here um, who are here to support your family God. out of love. And, uh, and that's not even including our virtual audience who is watching as well. So um, we do thank God for uh, the love that is shown here today, the comments that have been expressed to this family, um, to the leadership of this church, myself as pastor, and other leaders. Uh, one or two uh, came through earlier and viewed and spoke to you guys and had to leave. But I do thank God for all the leadership of, um, of St. James Baptist Church. Uh, we are a loving family. We are a supportive family. And uh, we, are, we are a family. We're so grateful to be a part of this, this family. Thank God for our minister, Mr. Rogers. Thank God for our musicians and uh, all of you who are here today. Uh, what a blessing uh, it is. Um, I won't be too long. I, I do know we um, have other things we, we need to do. But uh, again, we do want to take advantage of the time. Amen. Amen. We do want to respect that. Miss um, Pat. Amen. That's, that's what I call it, Miss Pat. Pat, don't say a whole lot. Um, um, she's not one for a lot of words, um, but uh, she proved with her hands. Amen. She worked. She got involved in ministry here. Uh, she made herself available. And, um, and I did notice that it didn't take long to catch on. It didn't take much, or don't take much to make, to make, her, to make her laugh. Um, I just enjoyed Miss Pat. I enjoyed being around her. And thank God for her spirit. And I just pray we will hold on to that. Amen. Um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. As I look out, y'all might be saying, it looks like the, the New York crew is here. Amen. Uh, to God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. I think it's definitely fitting for. We know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by our life. Now, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Amen. So, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith 
and not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. I want to talk from the subject, no place like home. No place like, like home. Uh, my brothers and sisters, many of us know what it's like to be away from home uh, for, whether it's just for a few hours of work or leisure um, or to move away from home, um, uh, um, to travel the world, uh, be in the military, or just um, maybe work out of uh, where you were born and every now and then look forward to going home, visiting family uh, and friends and relatives. Uh, the one thing we can say about, about home is that once away from home for a while, there is the tendency and the desire to want to return there. Um, um, if, you, if you're on vacation, uh, you run out of money or time, one, one of the two have to come first. Amen. Uh, we end up wanting to go to go back pretty much home. Uh, um, hard days work, uh, eight, 10 hours, 12 hours of work. Uh, we look forward to the privilege and opportunity to leaving the job and the knuckleheads on the job and just returning back home, relaxing and enjoying, enjoying the home. Those who may have traveled uh, in the military, as Jim has been served the United States Marines, we look forward to uh, working away from home in the military, but at the same time, I'm sure, Jim, there were days when you could not wait uh, to get a pass and just, and just go home. Just go home. Um, and the reason why we look forward, anticipate going home, because home is where we have left something. Amen. Um, there, there, there is not just the space we are going to visit. Um, we're not just going to go back home and visit things. We're coming back home to visit people. Amen. Um, the people we come back to visit uh, are family, our children, our wives, um, our siblings, uh, maybe even a few friends. But we look forward to coming home uh, and enjoying the friends. Um, but, but a lot can happen between um, uh, being at home and away, away from home. Uh, the Apostle Paul helps us to understand in this letter to the Corinthian church uh, that uh, how it is when he read this letter or wrote this letter appended to the Corinthian church or how important it was uh, to know how it was to be in what he called this earthly body or what he called this tent. Um, he called it an earthly body, or he called it a tent, because one, it was made of flesh. Um, he said that in this earthly tent, in this body, uh, we mourn when we're not at home with, with the Lord. He says that when we mourn, our, our bodies mourn to be clothed, to be fully clothed. And then he said to be absent from the, uh, from the, uh, to absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. In other words, when, when our soul leaves this body, this flesh, this dirt in which we, or this clay in which we are made out of, there is a desire for our soul to not just want to go anywhere, but it is a desire for our soul to want to go back from whence it hath come, and that is the Lord himself. Amen. For do know that all of us are made of dirt. The word reminds us in Genesis that from dust we came and from dust we shall return. Doesn't matter how fine you are, doesn't matter how curly your hair might be, doesn't matter what color your eyes might be, how well you may dress at the end of the day, you might not like it, but all of us are nothing but just dirt. Amen. We came from dirt, we will return back to dirt. But it was God, the providence of God that breathed into dirt uh, after it had been formed by his hand. It was God who breathed into us 
and by him breathing to us, the word says we became living souls. Praise God. I know that's hard to fathom, particularly those of us who may be scientists or uh, believing in what uh, men have said we are, but at the end of the day, uh, we, we are dirt. Uh, praise be to God that God allows us to enjoy family and life. And Paul wants us to know uh -huh. that this earthly tent that we live in is nice, but there's something about this earthly tent that don't last long. My goodness. Maybe three score and ten, and the blessings of God maybe live longer, but, but there's something about flesh. There's something about being in this world. There's something about living among us and among others that is totally different about being away, about totally different than being with, with God. In fact, it was Jesus who reminded us that uh, he's gone to a place to, he's gone to make way for us and to uh, build a place for us that made with hands. It was Jesus who reminded his disciples that where I am, you will be, you will be also. So, so there is something to this thing here yes. about living here on earth, but transitioning to where God wants us to be eternally. Mm -hmm. Let me say something about being away from home is that when you're away from home or when you're at home, you meet a lot of people up and down your travels. We all meet people. And there are some we regret meeting, but <laughs> there are some we would hold on to uh, for life. Mm -hmm. They're dear to us. They've been so kind to us. They're just what we call good people. And I believe from what I have experienced, uh, Miss Pat, I would call her, to me, seem to be good people. Amen. I don't take that lightly because friendships and relationships mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, as a pastor, I, I can tell you that. Um, I won't get into detail, but, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm a social butterfly. I love people. Um, I respect people. I love people's stories. Love to meet people's families. At the same time, there are some ones I met, I'm like, okay, I think if I met them one, I met them all. But there's something about Miss Pat that was just loving and so kind, and just so her gentle spirit, her few little words that drew me to her as a magnet. Mm -hmm. And I can understand how she was to you. If she was just that way to me in a short time, I can imagine, Jim, how you may have felt over these 27, 20 more years of how she has been there so kind and you have been drawn to her. Yes. But let me move on how, to, how Paul talks about how there's something about being away from God. And he says that for we know that this earthly house, that tent, once it is destroyed, we have another building from God. A house not made with hands in the eternal. Praise God. We have to understand we talk about the travels of being in a tent took me back to when the Old Testament, when the people of Israel would just travel. They didn't, they didn't build a permanent church yet like we have. They, uh -huh. they, they would put up a tent or they would pitch a tent and then they would build them an altar. Yes. They would set up a temporary tent made of goat skin, camel skin, and so forth. And they would just set up a temporary tent. But at the temporary tent, they would set up themselves altars somewhere where they could worship God because the tent signified we're not going to be here forever. My the tent signified that we're going to camp out right here maybe for a few nights, a few days, a few weeks. But the tent symbolized that once we camp out here, once we hear from God, once that, once that cloud that led us in the day and that fire that led us by night, once God said it's time for us to move, we're going to tear this old tent down yeah. and take the altar with us and we're going to move. My brothers and sisters, that, that is what God has challenged us to do in this life. These earthly bodies we live in are nothing but tents. And because they are tents, we have to build altars in them. In other words, we have to build somewhere in our heart where we can worship God. Yes. It's nothing worse than being in this life, being a tent, and not have an altar where you can talk to the Lord. An altar where you can lay down your burdens and troubles. An altar in your heart where you can confess your sins before God and God can forgive you. It's nothing like being an earthly tent and knowing that you have an altar in your heart where when times get rough, there is a God in heaven that we can call. Yes. And I'm so glad 
Miss Pat had taken the time not only to travel and pitch her tent, but at the same time, she had an altar in her heart Praise for God. God. How do I know one? Because she would come to church and worship. Yes. In her quiet spirit, she would come to church and she would worship the Lord. She didn't just come to be a spectator. She didn't just come based on the premise of who else was going to come. Whether you came or not, she was going to come. She was going to come because, again, the, her heart was grateful for what the Lord has done for her. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, if we could translate that to our own lives, is that we live in a world now where we pitch tents, but I'm afraid we don't build altars like we used to. We don't build altars. Nobody really has time for church anymore. Uh, we, we're trying to get the finer things in life that we think are finer. Um, uh, we're seeking the gain of the world. Nobody now takes the time now to, to not only pitch a tent, but nobody takes the time now to build them an altar. And let me say this, family, we're going to make it. we got to build some altars. Amen. If we're going to make it in this life and in this world, we've got to build us some altars. We're going to have to build them in our hearts, and we're going to have to also build them in our homes. Mm -hmm. There's going to have to be a place in the house or in the home that is sacred for God. Praise God. A corner in the house, just a, just a corner in the house, a, a bedroom, a closet, some, some, uh, some place of solace, Praise some God. sanctified place in the house where we can go and close the door and talk to God about the cares of this world. Yes. A place in our home where we can build an altar and talk to God about the heaviness of our heart. Oh yes, and the burden of our children. An altar in our home. One in the heart, you can carry it with you everywhere you go. One in the home makes you want to come back home so you can Get back to it. God. It is a joy. It is a blessing, family. That you had a mother, a wife. You had somebody who would go to the Lord on your behalf. Praise God. That's what that's what that's what real mothers do. In fact, let me say this: that is what really older mothers do. Uh -huh. I distinguish all the time the difference between older mothers and younger mothers. And let me, let me help you. Uh, younger mothers and older mothers do not have the same prayers. Younger mothers, let me tell you, younger mothers pray for houses and land. Younger mothers pray for uh, another man uh, or, or things. That's what younger mothers pretty much pray for. Younger mothers are pretty much materialistic. Older mothers don't pray for houses and land because one, they ain't trying to buy another house. They don't want no more land. Most of them don't want another man either. They'll tell you that. Older mothers pray for a reasonable portion of health and strength. That's what they pray for. And then they pretty much pray for their families and their children. You don't believe them? Listen, listen to older mothers at the altar and listen to younger mothers at the altar. And you can tell the difference in their prayers. Older mothers Praying, Lord, help me get back. Help me to hold out. Older mothers are praying, Lord, uh, please, Lord, uh, bless these children. Lord, older mothers are praying, Lord, if you could just help me make it through the day. Lord, uh, Lord, if you could just help me to hold out, you could just give me the strength. They don't have time to pray for the, for the smaller things because they have matured by this time. Yeah. And I'm willing to make it back. If I could just probably tap into Miss Pat's heart, I'm going to make a bet that as she got older, I can make a bet that most of her prayers will gear toward, Lord, help me to hold out. And Lord, bless my family. Praise God. Lord, thank you for my husband, Jim. Thank you for my children. Thank you for friends, yes. Miss Diane and others. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for surrounding me with good people. 
Thank you, Lord, for giving me somewhere where I can go to church on Sunday and worship. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for thank you, Lord, for bringing me this far along life's way. Because many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us yes. out of them all. And lastly, let me say, not only did she build an altar in her heart in her tent, not only did she have an altar in her home, but lastly, let me say, that she realized that in this life, there will be another home. Praise God. That there will be a home that I can't invest all of my time here on earth trying to fix up my home. In other words, I've got to work on my own relationship with God. When I was younger, my mother used to say this to us, to us boys, when we were young and coming up. And my mama used to tell us, um, when y'all gonna get baptized? And uh, most of the time we had to reply. We thought we were too young to be baptized. Uh, we, we, had, uh, we had things to do. We had places to go. We had people to see. And let us tell them we had people waiting to see us. But what she really was getting that late on, and this is what she said. She said, well, uh, I'm a junior, so she said, no, Junior, she said, uh, well, I can't make you do what you ain't ready to do. She says, but uh, I can tell you this. Uh, mama may have, and then you may have. She said, but God bless the child that got his own. Can I tell you what she was telling me? What I, how I interpreted that? What she was telling me was, uh, I can't, I, I can't die for you, and I can't, I can't go to heaven for you, and I don't have a hell to put you in. But what I can do is pray for you that one day you will make a decision on your own. That, that's what she was. That's what she was really saying. And thank you to God, I, I did make a decision later on in life. But let me close by saying that Ms. Pat realized this is not gonna always be my home. There's another place I'm longing to be. Praise God. There's another place where COVID is not around. There's another place where I don't have to take blood pressure medicine and regulate my blood sugars and, and, uh, and have to have life insurance and, uh, and come home hungry and wonder where I'm going to get something. There, there's, there's another place not made with earthly hands. But there's another place. Mm -hmm. Let me close by saying we all know the story of Dorothy the Wizard of Oz. We know Dorothy got caught up in with a tornado, a hurricane tornado in Kansas. And when Dorothy was away from home, Dorothy ran up against all types of people. Mm. There were some who was for Dorothy and wanted her to get home. But then there was, you know, the, the wicked witch of the east or the west who, who represented the enemy and trying to keep her from getting home. And in this life, we have enemies trying to keep us from getting home. But thanks be to God, we got Jesus. Hallelujah. Who sticks closer than a friend. Hallelujah. Who made a way for us, church, to go home. Yeah. Thanks be to God for Jesus, who told his disciples when they asked him, Where are you going, Jesus? He said, I'm going to a place. Yeah. And I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you will be also. If it wasn't so, he said, I would have. I would have told you. Miss Peck left us, but she didn't leave us. Mr. Jim, she's gone home. She's gone home to a home where joy will never end. Praise she's gone home to a place where she can hang her hat of frustration over in a corner and leave it. Praise She's gone home where she'll be able to be around the throne of God forever. 
She's going to a new home. Yeah. She will have a new body. Yeah, praise God. She will live eternity in a home that we've never seen. Praise God. We've heard about it, but we never, we've never seen it. Praise All I want to say is, Miss Pat, take your rest. Praise Enjoy your home. You left a home here. But there's a greater home. And in the words of David, when he lost his son, you will no longer come to us anymore, Miss Pat. You will no longer sit at the table with us. You will no longer be there to read our Mother's Day card. Christmas cards. You will no longer be there to read our text or the text back and answer the phone. Praise God. You will no longer come to us. But in the words of David, that we can come to you. Yes, Lord. Lord, prepare us. Prepare this family to come to her. And the only way that they can come to her is through you. Yes, Lord. Because where she is, nobody can get to her now unless they come through you. The enemy cannot get to her. Even the angels can't get to her right now. She's in your bosom. And Lord, you said once we're in your hand, no man can pluck us out. Yes, Lord. She's protected. She's guarded. You said, Lord, all souls are mine. And her soul is yours. So God, I ask in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Prepare us. Prepare us. Yes, Lord. Prepare her children, her grandchildren. Prepare us. Thank you, Lord, her faithfulness to you, her love to her family. But you love her greatly. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless Jim, yes. protect him, and cover him, and keep him. Hallelujah. Let this be an opportunity for this family to become closer than they've ever been for tomorrow. It's not promised. Amen. Yesterday has already gone. And today is the day of salvation. Lord, bless them in their going. Bless them in their return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.